Coming up on Hands On Tech, let's take a look at how we can use a webcam when our computer is rather far away. Stay tuned. This is Twit. Hello and welcome to Hands On Tech. I am Micah Sargent and today I am answering your tech questions. Yes, it is time to look through the grab bag, the mail bag, whatever you want to call it, the virtual bag and find a question. I'm reaching in and this week I've pulled out, oh my goodness, it's a scroll uh, from Rich. Rich has written in with the following. I have a webcam problem that I'm hoping you can help me with. I'm an audiobook narrator and I have a recording booth set up in a room in my house that also serves as my office. About six months ago, I replaced my 2018 Mac Mini with a 2025 model. My Magic Trackpad is connected via Bluetooth. My Logitech wireless keyboard is connected via USB dongle, though previously directly into the 2018 Mini, now using a USB to Thunderbolt adapter since the 2025 has no USB-A ports, and an HDMI splitter that drives both the monitor on my desk as well as the monitor in my booth via a long HDMI extension cable. When I want to move from my desk to the booth, I just grab my keyboard and trackpad and I'm good to go. I also have a Logitech 720p USB webcam. Because of the layout of the room, the Mini is more than 15 feet, as the cable runs, from the monitor in the booth, so I have a powered USB cable. When I'd use the webcam on my desk, I'd plug it directly into the Mini, and when I used it in the booth, I'd plug it into the extension cable. I've used the webcam on my desk, plugged directly into the new Mini using a USB to Thunderbolt adapter, and it's worked fine. I recently tried using the webcam in the booth for the first time since upgrading to the Mini, and because the 2025 Mini has no USB-A ports, I plugged the powered USB cable into a USB to Thunderbolt adapter, but the webcam didn't work. I also got a notification stating USB accessories disabled. Unplug the accessory using too much power to re-enable USB devices. After some basic Googling, it seems like the maximum run for a Thunderbolt cable is even less than for a USB cable. But the only thing I can find that's comparable to a powered USB cable for longer runs is a fiber optic Thunderbolt cable, which is outrageously expensive, far more than I want to pay for something that's very useful, but only rarely. So what are my options here? Is there some specific type of powered USB extension that would work here? Is it possible to run 15 feet to 20 feet of Thunderbolt cable without using fiber optic? Is there some other way to get a webcam in the booth? Thanks for any insight you can provide. Love this question, Rich. Uh, we're going to start before we get into some of the suggestions I have with a little bit of an understanding. The term Thunderbolt, it is it appears, has confused people over time because when they see Thunderbolt, they think that it means one must use a Thunderbolt cable in order to make use of the port. Thunderbolt is sort of added magic on top of USB, okay? And so given that that's the case, one should not assume that one must use a Thunderbolt cable in a Thunderbolt port because you can actually use a standard USB-C cable in a Thunderbolt port. In fact, I have, uh, it's not nearby because I was just using it the other day, a really long cable that I bought from Apple, beautiful braided uh, and not incredibly expensive because it was just USB-C, and I plug that into Thunderbolt ports all day, every day. Uh, it is regularly used in that spot. So when you are looking for a cable rich and you are limiting yourself to just Thunderbolt cables because you feel that that's the only thing that can plug into the, the ports on the mini, that is a misconception. USB-C, which is which refers to the shape of the cable, uh, or excuse me, of the port and the the plug, is possible in something that is is termed as a Thunderbolt port. Okay, now you of course won't get all of the power that Thunderbolt provides if you're using a USB C cable that's non Thunderbolt. There, uh huh. Uh, you can think of it as like lowest common denominator. It will support everything down here, but you need more if you want to do more. 
but it's still going to support everything down here. And so oftentimes, the cool thing is, too, that the cables themselves are able to be used in, in systems where it's USB-C. So I regularly have, uh, I've got one right here, a Belkin Thunderbolt cable that I use. This is a Thunderbolt um, 3 cable. And... This sits on my desk because I use it as a USB-C cable all the time. The reason why is because I know that given that it's Thunderbolt 3 it and, and that it's from Belkin, I know that it supports up to 100 watts of power delivery. So that means I can charge almost anything, any kind of bigger device that I have, for example, uh, went on a recent camping trip and had this anchor power bank and plugging this in with my Thunderbolt 3 cable into a uh, device that I have that charges stuff, um, I was able to get the quickest charge possible. So all of these can kind of be used, um, you know, back and forth uh, without so much concern over the fact that it's Thunderbolt. The only thing is, if you're expecting Thunderbolt magic, then of course you need to be using a Thunderbolt cable. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about this a little bit more. Here's what I think you should do, and I think this is going to be the solution that's going to take care of everything. You should get a powered USB 3 hub that much like, remember, if you, if you, uh, if you tune into my last episode, um, I talked about uh, KVM and Heath had mentioned using a powered USB hub. This is actually the thing that you need to do too. What you'll do is in your uh, booth, your, the, the booth that's you know, 15 feet away or whatever, you're going to get a powered USB hub. What does that mean? Again, a powered USB hub is one that plugs into the wall. So I've linked this one from TP-Link. It's under $30 uh, and it has multiple USB-A ports, uh, many of them USB 3.0. So it's faster speeds and it's powered. So what you can do is plug this into the wall, plug your Logitech into it, and then run that cable that you got from your Mac all the way through to the um, to the booth. And so then it doesn't need to be powered on the other end because the power is being provided right there next to your uh, your your webcam. Now, here's the other thing. I found this interesting and I am curious. I noticed that you say in your question, that you use a now using a USB to Thunderbolt adapter since the 2025 has no USB ports, meaning USB A ports. Uh, then you say it again somewhere. Oh, I plug the powered USB cable into a USB to Thunderbolt adapter. I am curious what brand of USB to Thunderbolt adapter you're using. Is it the one from Apple? Or is it a third-party version? Because depending on the adapter, that can also make a difference. Some of them are able to pass along power and some of them are not. So you were plugging in a, uh, you were trying to plug in a powered cable and when it's trying to pull that power, there may be some confusion that's going on there depending on what you're using. You call it a, th a USB to Thunderbolt adapter, but I don't know that that's actually what it is. I, I would imagine it's probably a USB-C to USB adapter, which is technically USB-C to USB-A. And so you're having USB-C, which is shaped like the Thunderbolt because, again, Thunderbolt's just uh, a special magical flavor of USB-C. You plug that in. On the other side is your standard USB-A port, the sort of rectangular one. And you're plugging in your powered cable. And then that powered cable is trying to pull juice, but it can't pull juice properly from the Mac Mini. And then it's trying to pass that along to the uh, camera that is also trying to pull, and it's not able to do that. So that could be one of the issues that you're experiencing here, which again, 
is why I think that the powered USB hub is going to be your best bet. You have that powered USB hub that doesn't need to pull power from your Mac mini. It's just sending data back and forth. And that should take care of it. There are no power delivery issues because the webcam is powered right there next to you. And again, that USB extension cable that you're going to use, make sure it's a high quality one. I recommend Cable Matters products. Um, again, it does not need to be active. It can be passive. Um, I did link to a an active option because there is a possibility that the, if I don't know what powered cable you're using, um, some of them have different power delivery options, and that can make a difference when it comes to what it's sending along. I know that this Cable Matters version absolutely is an active cable specifically for webcams. So anytime uh, this is the, I love an opportunity to help people help me help them, anytime you're writing in with a question Always great to include when you're talking about specific things that you're using, what they are, if you can, if you can tell me what kind of cable it is, what the brand is, any little bit of information that can be very helpful uh, to be able to kind of narrow in on your problem. I really do think that the powered USB hub is going to be the answer that you need. However, I will say, if you want something more powerful but pricey, you could get a Thunderbolt for dock that is kind of going as part of the experience. Um, what you can do is then run uh, Thunderbolt 4 to your from from where your machine is to the closet. And it doesn't need to be uh, a fiber optic version because in this case, it's um, it, it's going to be able to power it that way. So if you want to go all in on Thunderbolt, that's an option. I really think option one, just try a powered USB hub. That's great too, because if you needed to, you could plug in, for example, maybe you want a little desk light, a little USB powered desk light as you're reading the book, right? Or I don't know if you're viewing it on a screen or whatever, or if you are viewing it on a screen and you want to have your notes there and you take your notes on an iPad, then you can keep your iPad plugged in. Any of these options are available to you when you've got USB right there that you can plug into. So USB hub, again, is going to be my main option. The last thing I would mention is you could consider, <laughs> that's funny, Dustin, this is my last uh, suggestion. Uh, Dustin in the chat has mentioned my option four, um, which is continuity camera. So uh, continuity camera is, if you've got an iPhone, is a newer option available to people who are well within the Apple ecosystem, an iPhone and a Mac, in which case you are able to use your iPhone as the webcam for your Mac. Now, here is what I recommend to you. Take your iPhone, and we'll link in the show notes how the whole setup process. I'm not going to go into the whole setup process here, but take your iPhone, go up to your Mac, uh, get it set up there, and then, because this works wirelessly, so it's it's like a Wi-Fi system, take your phone and walk all the way to where you want to have it in your, uh, your little studio booth and see if it works. Because you are required to be within a certain distance of your Mac in order to make use of this functionality, all signs point to that being 30 feet or closer, but it can sometimes be finicky based on whether it's able to maintain a Bluetooth connection and a, uh, a direct Wi-Fi connection. So that can sometimes mess things up. So just give it a shot and don't try to connect your phone as a webcam with it in the booth and your Mac where it is. Do it when they're next to each other and then take your phone and walk away with it and see if that works for you. So if the powered USB hub is not the solution, then secondarily is why I recommend going with continuity camera. And then the solution after that would be making sure that the uh, powered USB cable that you have is truly an active USB cable. And it, 
and a, a good brand. Uh, again, I get almost all of my cables from Cable Matters, uh, save for Thunderbolt cables, which I always get from Belkin or Apple. Uh, but those are some suggestions for you. Love this question. Um, Rich, I'd love if you wrote back with a couple of uh, books that you have, have uh, voiced. It's something I've always wanted to do. So I always think it's super cool when I hear about people who've done audiobooks. Just such a neat thing. And an opportunity to use voices or something. I think that'd be fun too. All right, we'll be back to the show in just a moment, but I want to remind you about Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. When you join the club, it is a great experience because for just $10 a month, $120 a year, you can be part of the fun. First and foremost, you get every single one of our shows ad-free, just the content. Something that I think is super cool, maybe it's a little cheesy, but I think it's neat, is when you subscribe to those ad-free feeds, you will see that each of them is labeled just for you. It literally says your name right there in the feed, so you know it's yours. And also, you know, so you don't share it with anyone else, which you wouldn't do, right? Uh, you also gain access on top of all of that ad-free content. You get access to our feeds, the special Twit Plus feeds that are only available to you as a member. You can check out our news events. That's where uh, you'll see commentary, uh, live commentary from hosts. That includes our recent coverage or uh, once coverage of the Made by Google event with Leo Laporte and yours truly. Uh, we've also covered the Apple event. We do every Apple event that comes around. All of that is just for club members for many reasons, but one of those is so you can get catch that later on and access to the third feed uh, that has our Twit Plus stuff. Those are uh, behind the scenes moments before the show, after the show, and our wonderful club exclusive shows like the wonderful, those events that, that take place like book club. We've also got Micah's Crafting Corner. Uh, we've got occasional coffee time, photo time with Chris Marquart. And I am working on a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is very exciting as well. Uh, if all that sounds good to you, you should join the club. If you would like to hang out with us as well, you, as a member of Club Twit, will get a key to the Club Twit Discord. That's a fun place to go to chat with your fellow Club Twit members and those of us here at Twit. It's a wonderful, fun time uh, where we've got people posting GIFs all the time, uh, sharing what's going on with them. There's a 3D printing uh, channel where I've hung out to uh, talk about what's going on with my 3D printer and stuff that I've been working on. All so much fun, all available to you as a member of Club Twit. And uh, if all of that sounds good, I should mention, it starts with a two-week free trial. So head to twit.tv slash club twit to sign up. I look forward to seeing you in the welcome section of the Discord when you join. Uh, we've got lots of wonderful people joining all the time, scrolling through going, ooh, hey, look, there's a new person. Oh, wait, 15 new people joined? Oh, that's awesome. So I can't wait to see your wonderful faces there in the Discord. And we'll see you soon. Twit.tv slash club twit. Let's head back to the show. Um, so thank you, Rich, for writing in. And to those of you out there who have questions uh, yourself, you can always reach me, hot at twit.tv. That is where you go to get in touch. Uh, and I will be back next week with another episode of Hands on Tech. Until then, goodbye. Get tech news at your pace with Twit TV's perfect pair of shows. For quick, focused insights, Tech News Weekly brings you essential interviews with the journalists breaking today's biggest stories. But maybe you need more. That's why I'm here. Dive deep with me on This Week in Tech, your first podcast of the week and the last word in tech. Industry insiders dissect everything from AI to privacy to cybersecurity in tech's most influential and longest running roundtable discussion. Short or long, streamlined or comprehensive, twit.tv keeps you well informed. Subscribe to both shows wherever you get your podcasts and head over to our website, twit.tv, for even more independent tech journalism.